Welcome to my tutorial on how to build a CRUD serverless API with API Gateway, AWS Lambda, and DynamoDB. So what does serverless mean? Well, it's when you use a cloud-based provider like AWS to allocate and provision servers and infrastructure on an as-needed basis. As an application developer, you can now focus on development without having to worry about infrastructure and maintenance. So why go serverless? First, scalability. This allows you to scale up or down as needed and on demand. Second, cost. You only pay for what you need as most costs are determined by usage and execution times. This offers savings over dedicated servers where you still incur costs even when servers sit idle. Third, availability. The cloud provider has agreed upon SLAs for uptime and availability, which offer little to no downtime. Lastly, lower maintenance. There are no physical servers to maintain, which in turn saves time and resources. So now that you see some of the benefits uh, for going serverless, let's get on with the demo. So the first thing we're gonna do is start off with creating the DynamoDB. So from here, let's click on DynamoDB and click on create table and we'll give our table a name. So let's call it CRUD demo. Uh, we'll also give it a partition key. We'll give it ID. Sort key we'll leave empty and the rest of the table settings we will leave the default settings for now. And then we will go and click create table. So as you can see here, uh, AWS is now creating our table. Once it's done, the status will get updated to active. So as you can see here, the table is now active and we can move on to creating our Lambda. So now that we have our table created, let's move on and create our Lambda. So we'll click on Lambda. Now we'll click on Create Function. We're going to author the Lambda from scratch. We'll start by giving our Lambda a name. Uh, the, as for the runtime, we'll leave it Node.js, but know that you can switch between programming languages for your Lambda. But for the demo, we will use Node.js. Uh, we'll leave the architecture and we'll move on to permissions. We're going to create a new role for AWS and we'll use the policy templates to help us do that. So let's give our role a name, CRUD demo role. And the policy template we're going to use is the simple microservice permission. So this will give our role permission to DynamoDB and also give our role permission to uh, write to the CloudWatch logs. So now we'll go ahead and create our function. As you can see here, our function got created. It has a default handler in the index.js, but what we will do is I already wrote some code ahead of time, uh, which I posted in the link below. It's uh, stored in GitHub. You can download it and try for yourself later, but we'll take that code and paste it in here. I already have it here, so I'll copy the code. We will paste the code in into the index.js and we'll hit deploy. So this will deploy our code for our Lambda. Uh, so we can take a quick look at what this code is doing. It's using the AWS SDK and using that, it's going to connect to our DynamoDB for us. Uh, we have four methods. So it's split up into the first method being the delete item by ID. We can take any item and delete it based on the ID partition key. Uh, we can get a single item by ID. So that just pulls back any item uh, specified by ID. Uh, we can get a list of all the items in the table if we wanted to, and we can either add or update any item in our table with this put call here. So again, I provided a link to this. You can download it and paste it directly into the index.js uh, if you want to try the sample. So now that that's done, we can go ahead and move on to creating our API gateway. 
So finally, the last thing we'll want to do is create our REST API via the API Gateway. So first we'll click on API Gateway. And we'll scroll down and what we want to build is a REST API. So select build. So it's going to be a REST API. We're going to be creating a new API and we'll want to give it a name. So let's just call it CRUD Demo API. We can go ahead and click Create API. So you see here is the base for our API. So what we'll want to do now is begin adding resources and methods uh, so we have endpoints for our API. So we'll start off, if we refer back to our code actually, um, some of our resources will sit under items and some will actually take a parameter ID. And we have a delete, two get methods and one put. So let's begin building our API. So first off, we'll start by creating a resource. We're going to call this resource items. And for all these, we can click enable cores. Uh, so we don't run into problems when we call the API. And we click on create resource. So now we have a resource called items. And if you remember back from our code, we have another parameter called ID. So let's go ahead and create that. So that's another resource. It's called ID. But actually, since it's a parameter, we're going to put some parentheses around these. And again, we'll enable the course and we will create the resource. So referring back to our code, uh, the, we will start with the delete method. So under actions, we're going to add a delete method here. So we're going to add a method. First one will be a delete. Click the checkbox. So this is going to be a Lambda function. We will enable proxy integration. That just maps our event variables nicely so that they're easier to work with. And we're going to point to our Lambda function start typing you'll see our lambda function name just pops up and we can click save so that is our delete we also had a get so let's go and add another method this will be our get method by id check the box so again this is a lambda function we will enable the proxy integration and we will again point to our lambda function save okay so that's our delete and get method by id so if we forget what else we have to do let's go back and check our code so we have two more methods that are directly under items a get and a put so let's go and add those so under items we will add a another method this will be our get method enable the proxy integration Point to our lambda function, save, and our final method, oops, create method. This will be a put, enable proxy integration, again, point to our lambda. And just another note, we left all the regions default US East. So for now, we can just leave it. No need to change that and click Save. And now we have our REST API endpoints created. So now that this is all done, uh, we can go ahead and deploy our uh, API. So what we would do now is go here and click Deploy API. When we deploy an API, you always have to select the stage. Uh, we can create a new stage and let's call this one Dev, our new Dev stage. So go ahead deploy so now we have a dev stage if we click on here you'll see there's the endpoint to our API and take note of that key because when we test this in postman you'll have to modify your the postman solution to use that same key value in the URL uh, so for now our API is deployed and we can move on to the next step to test our API see how it works so now that our API has been deployed 
we can actually test our REST API using Postman. So I actually provided a link to my Postman solution uh, also in GitHub. You can download that to test this out. Just one thing you need to note is that my endpoint will be different from yours. If you remember, if we go back to our uh, stage of our API, you'll see this is uh, an automatic uh, value created by AWS. So I just copied the updated version and put that in my Postman. So you'll have to do the same when you test this out on your, your machine. But for now, let's continue on and test the API. So let's go ahead and test the first method, which is the put method. So this put method will create a new item if it doesn't already exist or update one if it does exist. So if I run this now, we'll get a, back, a response that says put item one, two, three. So what we we'll wanna do is let's go query the database and see what we get back if we look for this one, two, three item. So here we have a generic get item, so it'll just get everything in the table. So if we run this, we see our one, two, three item. But let's say we want to grab our item specifically by a specific ID. We can run this method that's looking for the item by the key. So let's look for one, two, three, four. Let's see what we find. So right now it doesn't find anything because we created a one, two, three item. If we go back and change that ID, we run this now, we get back our one, two, three item. So now let's go add one more item to the database. We're going to add one, two, three, four to the database. We'll make this value one as you can see it added item one two three four again if we go get a list of all the items we will see here the two items that we added so let's pretend we want to go now and delete one of the items we can call our delete method let's delete the one two three four item we just created come here click on our postman it says it deleted if we go back we can grab our item list again and we'll see one, two, three, four is gone. Uh, let's test one other thing. Let's go and update our one, two, three item, change the price to maybe $1. So we already added one, two, three, four with $1. So now we're gonna update one, two, three for one. So let's go and run that. Came back success. If we go back and run this, pull all our items again, we see the price has now been updated to one. So that's pretty much it. As you can see, uh, we were able to read, write, and update to our DynamoDB table using our REST API gateway. So that's it for this video. Thanks again for watching. Feel free to post comments and subscribe. I'd love to hear from you guys on any new video topics you'd want to see. So until the next video, take care now. Bye-bye.